they're, they're simple, nothing complicated. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so the, the first question is an introduction of yourself. So the question is, who are you? Okay, so my name is Audrey Gordon, A-U-D-R-E-Y-G-O-R-D-O-N. I'm the member of the Legislative Assembly for the constituency of Southdale, which is in Southeast Winnipeg. It includes Southdale, Southland Park, Nyakwa Place, Nyakwa Park, and Windsor Park, and Southland Park as well. So um, it's, it's home to the Royal Canadian Mint and to over 100 businesses and about 25,000 residents. Um, very close-knit community, very established community, so not a lot of new builds occurring here. So it's a very established community uh, with young families, a lot of seniors and um, newcomers as well. I was elected to the Southdale constituency in September, 2019. Yeah. It's the first time that I have served in a political position. Oh, and um, I understand that when I was elected and sworn in, I was the first black MLA to be sworn in to office in the 150 year history of the province. Yeah. So I feel very honored and humbled to have the opportunity to be an MLA and to also represent the black community. Oh, that's, that's really awesome. Yeah, when I saw the news soon and I was really too, when I saw everything going, I was like, yeah, this is, this is a great news, great opportunity for us that the community, like uh, Winnipeg is a very diverse environment, Manitoba especially, it's a very diverse community and seeing people from different um, communities being in the leadership position gives uh, hope and assurance that um, anybody, anywhere, there is not by a color of your skin, anybody from anywhere can, uh, with the hard work and dedication, they're able to get into any position of leadership and opportunities that they have. For. So you are you are a source of inspiration to uh, you. a lot, a lot, a lot of people. So um, um, reaching out to you was was not something that I had to think twice because um, you and your journey is also a full inspiration. So um, thank you so much for sharing that with me. And um, which will lead me to the next question: Is how did you start your your career, um, I know you, you just said that um, you took your first time of running for electoral position. How did you start before that time? Um, how, what was your involvement before the time and now? So um, I, in terms of my background, I was born in Jamaica. So I'm from the Caribbean. Uh, my heritage is from the Caribbean. I, my, my family immigrated to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada in the early 70s. I have five brothers and two sisters. And I arrived here when I was five years old. So I have grown up um, in the Canadian culture, traditions and customs. I'm truly a winter baby and a Canadian. Um, I love the maple leaf. I love the freedoms and the rights and responsibilities that come with living in this great country. And so I have been schooled here and educated in at all levels here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I have not lived anywhere else. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, so, and, and that's not necessarily because I, I didn't want to, but uh, for personal reasons and family reasons, I've, I've stayed here. And so in my early, in my early years, I, I wanted to be an architect, which is really interesting that I'm now in politics because <laughs> I wanted so much, I started out as a young artist. I, I sold my first art piece when I was 16 years old and I wanted to be an architect and, uh, or a commercial artist. And I wasn't accepted to the Red River College when I presented my portfolio. And so somehow I landed myself in government. Wow. And I, I, I worked in government with, with the Department of Labor, the Department of Environment and Workplace Safety and Health. And then I went to work in the immigration division and I spent most of my, my career in that division working with newcomers, 
um, in the settlement and newcomer supports area. I was the head of multiculturalism for the government for about five and a half years. I spent some time working at the legislative building for about three and a half years with a deputy minister. And I think that's where the fire and the passion for politics was lit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then I decided to pursue my passion for healthcare. And I worked for 10 years in healthcare with the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority. Yeah. So 25 years with government and then 10 with the healthcare sector gives me, brings me to 35 years. So I'm not 35. That's <laughs> um, uh, so, so one of the things that I was really blessed with in my life, my father died three years ago on Remembrance Day was, uh, I had a father who really pushed the power of education mm -hmm. and how important it is to get a good education and to value the education that you receive through it's not necessarily just um, fi um, education, academia, or, yeah. but education that you can receive in many different forums and environments. And so, you know, I, I was, I completed my undergraduate and my master's program at the U of M. And I have several other certificates and I'm currently studying French. So it is my hope and desire to be fluently bilingual very soon. Um, so, so I, 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 try, I say to people that I somehow fell into politics because I was working at the legislative building and someone asked me to get involved with someone's election campaign. I thought, oh, why would I do that? <laughs> and I started working in the back rooms of campaigns afterwards. And so I learned the ropes and how to strategize your campaign, how to run a campaign and how to be successful. And I decided in 2016 that I would run for election. That was my first time that I ran. Yeah. And I ran in the area of Fort Rouge against who, the individual who's now the leader of the official opposition, as well as the leader of the Liberal Party and four or five other candidates. And I was not expected to do well. And I came second in that race. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was not for the faint of heart. It was very hard, very difficult, but I'm very passionate about politics and about serving. And so I decided in 2019, when the opportunity became available to run again in Southdale, that I would try again. Yeah. And like the little engine that could, I just worked very hard and was elected to office. Wow. So I, I, I mean, I can tell you a lot more about some of the things that I've done over the years, but um, I, I've worked a lot with newcomer groups. I, I've traveled to Ottawa to negotiate agreements on behalf of newcomers, very familiar with the federal system in terms of immigration and settlement. Mm -hmm. I've worked extensively with unions. With, I'm also a small business owner, yeah. so I understand very much um, the, the challenges and the impacts that COVID is happening on, is having on small businesses and my, my master's degrees in business administration. Wow. So, so I have a plethora, I guess, of, of ex experience in many different areas. Yes. Yes. And I, I'm so pleased to have this opportunity, as I said before, to be an elected official and to, to serve at the grassroots and to try and help one individual at a time and uh yeah so it's been a really really good opportunity in terms of my my personal life i'm married i've been married for 35 years wow. i have we have two adult sons my my son andrew lives in edmonton he's a tradesman he's a glazer my younger son is darnell he lives in neverville and he he works for DHL right now, but he is um, working towards studying to complete a health and wellness um, program. So he's, he's heavily into exercise and eating clean and staying healthy. We have a dog, his name is Dublin and he's a Jack Russell. And uh, we've been empty nested for about five years and we're loving it. <laughs> They're on their own and um, 
The only time we hear from them is when we know that they'll be asking for, for money or yeah. <laughs> a trip somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah, that's that's what's been happening. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's so good. You, you have an, um, an enormous career, both in, in, in politics side way and also in the in the healthcare and also getting to work with immigration to deliver with newcomers people that um that come so you have you have the, the necessary um experience even to to function in your own so um that's that's so good and also your family i love vice too vice family and uh, we always i reach out to my my siblings because i'm the last one so Whenever I do something, just reach out. So the most yeah, people, yeah. You know, when, when I call, they know. <laughs> they know something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just like, how much? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah. It's uh, thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing that. And that, that will lead me to my next question is that so, someone like you, you, you mentioned that uh, you, you're one of the first um, people of color to be elected into the into the parliament of Manitoba for, for the 150 years history. So I know there'll be a lot of challenges um, and you know, things to learn in that way. So what, what keeps you going despite the challenges that comes um, your way, especially in this COVID-19 when um, things are not going the way we plan. I mean, the, we plan this way and it turned out it's not working that way. So what keeps you going despite the challenges that come? You know, that's a really good question, and thank you for, for the question. I was talking with someone last night who approached me uh, because the individual wants to run in an election, and he wasn't quite sure what level he would run in, and it's, it's a Black young man. And, um, you know, we talked about some of the challenges of, of being in politics when you are black because there there are certainly those the, the there are certainly challenges that are unique to us mm -hmm. um and what keeps me going and and what i said to him was that i'm very intrinsically motivated mm -hmm. so i unlike other people and i don't mean that mean that in a negative way i'm i i'm very much motivated by my internal values, principles, and beliefs. And I came into this role knowing that I wanted, I was going to make incredible sacrifices because I want to serve my community. And so some individuals may need um, platitudes and constant um, affirmation and where I, I've, I've, I find that I, I, I don't need, I need less of that yeah. because I'm so focused on how, what can I do to help? Yeah. So the challenges with COVID is that we can't meet face to face. Yeah. We cannot be out in the community. Like I like to host coffee parties and with seniors. I like to meet face to face with my churches. I like to attend the church services, get to know the leaders and the members. And so we can't do that. And not everyone has social media. Yeah, that's true. So, so trying to find new ways of connecting through newsletters, through, um, there's so many Zoom meetings as well, you know, so many Zoom meetings and, um, but it's trying to be creative in how we, re we reach the constituents. So that's a challenge, certainly, because we cannot be face to face. Mm -hmm. The challenges are I like to support food banks. I like to support uh, fundraisers. And a lot of the fundraisers right now are canceled or they're online. And um, individuals are just not signing up to go online to give money. So it, it, it's a challenge and people really miss their contact with their elected official. So, so yeah, it's, it's very different. And even in terms of the chamber, when the house is in session, most of the MLAs were attending the chamber virtually. So sitting on Zoom and connecting to the chamber with your headset and reading your statement or, you know, so it, it just feels, 
there's there you you still feel disconnected even though they say you're connected virtually yeah, that's true yeah it still feels uh, you have a real strong sense of being disconnected so it's it's a real challenge and um so when i talked with this young man i talked about if you want to run for office you must accept that there's going to be challenges mm -hmm. as, as there is in everything, but some that are might be unique to us as people who are black is that it's, it's very new that, well, in 150 years, we've just elected black individuals. Yeah. So we're just breaking that glass ceiling and we are just taking our place in the halls of influence and power. So others now see that we have been able to do it, they want to do it. But yeah. we still face some of the, the challenges that were there before is that we're still having, we're still proving ourselves mm -hmm. in, those, in those environments. And we, in order to launch a successful election, you have to find volunteers, you have to be able to fundraise significant amounts of money and and you you have to have a lot of stamina and a lot of determination and so i'm glad that there are three of us in the legislature that individuals can now call on and say how do i do this yeah. and how can i be successful like you are so we step through the door but now we turn back to raise others up yes and and so every, you know, the Chinese symbol for, for um, problem is, is opportunity, right? Wow. And mm -hmm. in, in, there's always a silver lining in everything. That's and so I, I, what I say is we, we have to focus on that and just keep moving forward. But there are, there will always be challenges. I, you know, I said yesterday that politics is a blood sport. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a common it's a common term that is used and it's not for the faint of heart. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. It's very rewarding and fulfilling though. And um, yeah, and I feel very blessed to, to be an elected official. Wow. Oh, thank you so much. You share very, so much important uh, points. One of, one of it, if I could recall, is um, being internally motivated. Um, or yes. be inspired for what to do. And I think that that is very important because um, especially these days of social media, anybody um, anybody can post anything, anybody can create an account and start posting things. And I've seen a lot of comments, negative comments and attacks on even leaders pages. And that is very discouraging. And if you're not internally motivated, especially with this season, you may not you may be like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this, but because you're internally motivated, no matter the challenges you that comes your way, which take me to the second point, you are you see them as opportunities, even to yes. grow and also to to learn new ways to um, reach out to the constituencies to bring that new ways to pass out your message even even to the people. So, you, you, yeah, these are really valuable point valuable um, lessons. To, to me and even to other young ones to learn from you and from your experience. So thank you so much for, for sharing those um, with me. And now transitioning to my next question, which, which is um, if, if, you, if there is anything, uh, if there's an ambition or goal, what else, um, what, what would that be? What would be your next goal or ambition? Oh, you know, it's, I, I, I... I've been interviewed quite a bit since I was elected. And one of the things I've said is that I, I wish I had um, pursued this line of work sooner, yeah. but in Jamaica, we have a saying that nothing happens before it's time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I truly believe that I required the growth and development and the maturity uh, that I have now in order to be an elected official. So, so I think the timing is, is still right. Yeah. Um, but I do love it. I, I, I really do love it. And, um, uh, you know, it's, um, I, I kind of missed my, my train of thought there, but, um, it's, it's, if I, if I had to go back and 
think about how I might do life over again. One of the things that uh, my father would always say when we were growing up, uh, because my father really pushed education, was that um, education is a great equalizer and that anyone can take from you anything they want, but they can't take from you what you have in your head. And so I, 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 I regret that at a young age, I did not recognize the value of getting a good education sooner. So I did most of my, my degrees and ed, in the, la, the latter part of my career. But if I have a message for any of the young people, it's that get out there and go right from high school and just go right into programs and start building a strong base of solid education. It, no education is ever lost. So if you even decide to change direction and go and do, you start in social work and you say you're gonna go into medicine or you start in medicine or and say you're going into law, it's never lost because education is, a, is, is about building blocks. You're building on your knowledge. So one of the things I, I would say I might do differently is, um, is I would have done worked more harder at my education in the early years. Um, did, it, did I miss anything in, in yeah, your that's, question? That's a, really, that's a really valuable point. Yeah, that's a really good one. So yeah, you didn't, yeah, you didn't miss anything. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that, um, that we, should, we should value education of any form that um, someone, someone once said that um, no, is it, no knowledge is a waste, something, something of that nature. Yeah. And the, the, the better you know, um, the better you become as, as an individual. So learning more about education, educating ourselves in both the formal way and the informal way, getting the knowledge that we need. I think that's also a very important um, point. So thank you so much for sharing that. We bring to um, the end of my, my, my question that that's, that's mostly it from my end. You shared so much um, nugget that I think it's, I need to I need to reflect on this a lot of it, and we have a lot to learn from from you. And just just before you go, just want to ask if you have any final thought or final words. Well, you know, you started out the interview by saying that you wanted to do this because there are people, you know, shut in and discouraged, and and I, I think what COVID is doing, it's it's revealing. It's a good opportunity to see the strengths and weaknesses in individuals. Like how do you, how do you cope with intense stress? How do you cope with isolation? How do you cope with loneliness? How do you cope with rapid change? Because that's what the public health orders have done for us. Yes, it's yes. caused us to have to pivot several times and live differently and do things differently. And, how do you cope with going from being an, in an office with, let's say, 50 people to being alone at your kitchen table? How do you manage stress? And, and you know, I, I think I might have must have just had a really stressful life right from the beginning because I like to work out a lot. And I have a gym membership and the, the gyms are closed. So for a long while, I was just, you know, down on myself and, oh, I'm not going to work out till they open the gyms again. And I said, enough of that. You have a lot of equipment in the basement. You can walk. The weather is still great. And I, a friend of mine had purchased for me a kettlebell workout set, like for every day. And the kettlebells as well. And I had never, never even put, I was cutting open the box. And I started doing these kettlebell workouts and it just became, I was like a kid in a candy shop. I set up my schedule and the time of day that I would do them. And then I, after I finished my kettlebell workout, I go out for a walk. And I said, here I was, I was not able to cope with the loss of my gym yeah. and my ability to go to the gym and work out, but I adapted yeah. by doing a workout at home. So. I think COVID is an opportunity for us to all reflect on how we manage stress and adversity and to check our ability to cope. 
and if you cannot see your if you cannot see your like some people phone me or write to me and they say they can't see their counselor so i say to them have you taken a look at the counseling services that are online have you taken a look at some of the telephone services that are available through clinic for counseling mm -hmm. so it's helping us to find other avenues of support for because we're we're creatures of habit, right? Yes, yes, and, and so this is the way I do it. This is the way I drive home. This is when I get up. This is, and COVID is forcing change. And it's taken us 10 years into the future, technologically, yes, yes. because I would not even have thought about Zoom. Like the legislature would never have thought about um, MLAs sitting virtually. We had to be in the chamber. Yeah. And so it's pushing change that may not have come for maybe five or 10 years. Yes. Um, so one of the things that I try to say to people who are discouraged and down is as hard as it is, try to see the silver lining in it somehow, even if it's the size of a mustard seed, find it because there is a lesson to be learned in it. You know, I, have my son in Edmonton, he's terrible at saving, just terrible. And he, you know, Ed, Alberta decided to lock down the other day. And I've been talking to him since March about saving. And he says, you know what? You think I didn't listen to you, but I did. Because if they locked down for a month, I was gonna be fine. So it's teaching some of us the value of money. Yeah. And to save for a rainy day and to realize that the things of this world are fleeting and temporary. Mm. You could have a job today, you don't have a job tomorrow, so what is the backup plan? You know, you could have a house today if you have a, a huge mortgage and you lose your job due to COVID, where will you live? Mm. So it's forcing us to come up with alternative ways of thinking about life, about our priorities, about what's important. I mean, I have a husband who's a workaholic. Well, his business has been closed since March. Yeah. So he's learning the value of just being still and looking after himself and not burning yourself out on a business because it's closed, you know, and, and going for walks in the evening where so it's, it's not as much as it, it I mean, the deaths and the, the loss of life is awful. Yeah. I, I won't, th there's just no, it's awful. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that are happening that I think are good. Yes. And that lessons that are learned that we can take into the future that post COVID, we will still be able to apply them to our lives. Because we'll be thinking, oh, wow, I better think about saving for a rainy day. I better think about, well, if I could buy a house that's 800,000, but maybe I'll buy it for four, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, so it's, I think there are some good things. I, I, but the loss of life is the worst. The overwhelming, the health system, what our frontline workers are going through, it's, it's, it's awful. Um, and I wish them all health and safety, but I think with each individual, there, there are lessons being learned from this pandemic. So I say to everyone, keep your chin up. Um, you know, the, the, the race is not for the, the swift, yeah. it's for those who endure it to the end. Wow. Wow. And, yeah. and it's, it's about enduring to the end and being united as a community. Like I wrote on a post, this weekend that unity always is stronger than the forces that are coming into our lives and our environment to divide us and cause seeds of discord to grow. So we have to stay united. We have to help each other. We have to be there for each other. We have to build up our community and remember that we have a lot, lot of lived experiences that only we know and can share as people that are black. And um, yeah, just help one, one another and encourage one another and lift, lift your, your fellow 
human being up. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for, for this, not guess, for the wonderful time. And, and just run closing, closing with the, with the valuable point of looking for the silver linings in, in everything, as there's always a good part of it. Um, just like the, the, the Chinese proverb that's the, the Chinese word for symbol for um, problem is opportunities, always looking for yeah. the opportunities, something yeah. to learn from, from everything. And I, I learned this from one of um, the musicians I listened to said, um, every loss is a lesson. Um, yes. We are, not, we are not playing for losses, but we making sure that we look at the opportunities that we're trying to learn. What, what can we learn from what has happened or what is happening? And, and that, that you shared it in, in various ways. So thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. It's a privilege talking to you. And so thank you so much. I'll probably reach out to you some other time, but yeah, sure. thank you so grateful for the opportunity. Um, You're very you. welcome. Take care, stay Take safe care. and be Take well. Bye-bye.